Hello and welcome along to Mondo Child Effect Movies. My name is John. And this video has been a video I've been wanting to make for a long time. In fact, I did another video on how to collect Stanley Kubrick movies, which is well out of date by now. I might leave a link to that one down below if I can find it. And on this video, what I wanted to do was I wanted to take the 13 movies that Stanley Kubrick had made, feature films, and I wanted to rank them from worst to best. Spoiler alert, I think they're all good. When I was putting this ranking together, I realised a couple of things. One, I hadn't seen any of these movies on my new 4K OLED TV. And also, a lot of these movies have since come out in 4K, which I'll talk about more in this video. At number 13 is 1955's Killer Kiss. Now, Killer Kiss is actually a bonus movie on this, uh, this release from Arrow Academy. So a few years back, I did actually watch all of the Stanley Kubrick movies, and I think they're well due a rewatch. And the best thing about this is, I'm going to, what I've got is, this is my ranking of how I sit on today in May 2023. And there's only 13 films to get through, so I think I can get through them quite quick. And then I'll do a, like a, another ranking afterwards to say, are they in the same place? Or there, is there some that I like a lot more than I thought I would do? But Killer's Kiss, I've got this at the bottom because I don't really remember too much about it. it the basic story is with this, this washed up boxer falls for this woman and they get together and they're trying to leave town but their her partner has got something else to say about that this film is in black and white and it is available as a 4k by kino loba and it's got five out of five stars for picture quality now what i've done is i've looked in blu-ray.com and i've got some of these five star rankings from there and i'll tell you more about the 4ks so what I might do is when I watch these all the way through the the, the movies the ones that haven't gotten 4k that do have a 4k I think I'll probably upgrade them if I if I like them enough. But at number 13, that's Killer's Kiss. At number 12 is 1956's The Killing. What a great title. This is a great movie, actually, black and white again. And it's it's this gang that get together. And what they want to do is they want to, to rob this racetrack and they want to get $2 million from it. It's in the film noir style, which I think Stanley Kubrick does really well, although he doesn't do too many of them. And this is available as well by Kino Loba on 4K, and it's got five stars again. So this is one that I would think I would definitely want to go for because I remember watching this one. And it's funny because I watch Stanley Kubrick movies for the Stanley Kubrick isms in these movies. He hasn't really got them at this point in his career. He's just starting out, but I, I do find it be very entertaining. And I think he's got he's got an eye for cinema, as everyone knows. He's probably the greatest director that's ever lived. I think he is. So if you're not interested in the 4K, this is a great release to get. You get the Killing and Killer's Kiss on this disc. So um, it's a good cheap way to own these two movies. So for this one, I do think I'll get myself a 4K upgrade. So at number 12, that's The Killing. Now this may surprise some people. At number 11 is 1999's Eyes Wide Shut. Now I wasn't a big fan of Tom Cruise, as you know, for a long time. So I put this movie off completely i just didn't want to entertain anything with tom cruise in it obviously these days well obviously i was collecting all of his movies and i got them all and i knew i had to watch this one and i've got to say i mostly enjoyed this movie it's very kubrick-esque in certain scenes the only thing that sort of puts me off is got really extended scenes it's a really long film that's another thing that put me off it and uh, it's got these scenes with, it's especially an argument between those two, and it goes on forever. I think it goes on for 35 minutes of them just sitting arguing. And to be honest, that bit really gets on my nerves. But if you could kind of take that bit out of it, actually, the next time I watch it, I might even fast forward that. A bit sacrilegious, I know. But the, the story of this, when this guy gets embroiled in this, like he goes out on this night out, and he sort of gets into this sort of secret sect, and everything sort of goes really strangely wrong. And uh, it's a great movie for that. And I do think that those bits are brilliant in the movie. But sadly, the pacing of it is a bit odd. And I do think that that whole middle bit where they're arguing just really lets this film down. So that's why it's, it sings down a little bit. But when I do watch these, if I watch these again, well, I will watch these again, it might go up a slot. It might, it's maybe one of those ones. There's a few movies here that I started off thinking, I can't stand this movie. And it's got really high up in the list. So this is rumoured to be getting a 4K from Warner. I don't know how correct that is, but I just read online. I was looking up for these uh, 4Ks, prospective 4Ks. There is a sort of slight rumour that this is going to get put out. That's sort of what I'm getting from when I research this is that basically every Stanley Kubrick movie is going to get released on 4K. 
in some shape or form and I know they're working on a few of them at the moment. So at number 11, that's Eyes Wide Shut. At number 10 is 1960s Spartacus. The 4K on this looks sensational. It's one of the best 4Ks you'll ever see. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if I particularly like this movie. I haven't watched it fully all the way through. It's one of those movies that I struggle with. It's very long. And I appreciate how it looks. But another thing is that Stanley Kubrick didn't really direct it. He kind of picked up because of, that uh, Kirk Douglas fell out with the original director and he got his mate, Stanley Kubrick, to come in and sort of finish it off. So it doesn't feel like a Stanley Kubrick movie, but it does look sensational. And I will get, obviously, I want to watch it. I'll watch it fully this time round. The reason why it's down here is because it's just one of those movies that doesn't really feel like a Stanley Kubrick movie, although most of them here do. And I think that I do really need to get this looked at because a few times on other ones, I've looked at them thinking, I'm not going to like this one, and I've grew to love it. So this might happen with that one. But at the moment, this is at number 10. That's Spartacus. At number 9 is 1953's Fear and Desire. Now, this movie is only about an hour and seven minutes long, and it was Stanley Kubrick's first movie. Now, a lot of people don't like this movie at all. They say it's kind of something or nothing, but I think it's a really good movie. It's got some great performances in, and also it's in black and white. So this movie's got a great cast. It concerns some soldiers that have fell behind enemy lines, and they take a woman hostage, and it's all to do with the... Uh, between all of these people about what they're going to do with this woman and all that. It's quite uh, it's quite nervy at times. It's got some great cinematography. I think that's one of the ones that you can sort of see this one, as all his movies have got great cinematography, and you can just think, right, this bloke is destined for something big. But it's a great film. A lot of people don't rate it, but I think that this one, if it looks anything like this, Blu-ray looks lovely. If it looks anything like that in 4K, it would be an instant purchase for me. So at number nine, that's Fear and Desire. At number eight is 1987's Full Metal Jacket. Yes, this is quite low down in the rankings, but at this point, like I'd say, I've been watching these ones a while ago. This may jump up a bit. Just for my last watch, I mean, I, I love, like I say, I love all these movies. It's not as if I'm going to say, well, this one's, I think this one's trash because it's low down. Not at all. These are 13 solid movies. I think Sandy Kubrick is renowned for taking his time with stuff. And uh, it shows in his, his filmography. But this is a, a beautiful 4K. I'm really interested to see this one in on my lower TV because the early training ones seem to be a bit lower quality. And when they went out in the battle, it's, the quality seemed to go like amazing. So I want to see what that looks like in the 4K. But it's a great, it's a great film. I, I do think that actually it's a it's a movie of two halves. You get the sort of training and then you get the battle as well. This is the first movie on this list that I can say has a Stanley Kubrickisms in. I think when you've got the training camp and you've got the people standing in dormitories getting shouted at, you can really see his use of symmetry, which is the big thing in Stanley Kubrick movies, which becomes more apparent in other movies. One of them has got this practically everything about it is symmetry. You might know what that is, but it's coming up further down the line. So at this moment, this might be, it's a bit low, I, I admit that, but it might go up a little bit. So at number eight, that's Full Metal Jacket. So at number seven is 1957's Paths of Glory. Now, this is one of the movies that I knew about for quite a while, but I just didn't really have any feeling for it. It's actually, it looks like a really old-fashioned war film. And it's, it's one of those ones you don't even know is directed by him. You just hear, you see this picture and you think, oh, not my cup of tea. But far from it. Now, if you think about this about being a war film, it's not really a war film at all. The main story of it, which I didn't really know at all, and it's better for it, is that these people go into battle and a couple of them are, are classed as deserters or cowards. So they get tried in, in court. Now, Kirk Douglas is a former lawyer before he became a soldier. And he gets the charge of actually defending these two people to see if he can get them off of this charge. That's the story. And it's, it's so good. And it's it's much better for the... When I watched it, I thought, well, this is not going... Where's the war? Where's the fighting? But it's not about that. It's about this really sort of intricate story which goes into this courtroom battle. It sounds a bit like it sounds a bit boring when I say it, but it's far from it. And it does. You can see that. Uh, I tell you what, Kirk Douglas. He's he's a great actor, but he's absolutely amazing. This is the best role I've ever seen him in, and he's done some great roles over the over the years. So highly, highly recommended if you haven't seen it. And that is out in 4K by Kino Loba. 
this will be a definite picker for me. In fact, I don't know why I haven't even picked it up by now, but I will get around to that. Because it's and because the uh, the slip cover is probably long gone, it doesn't matter because I can go to my good friend Jam Slips and I can go to get a custom made slip cover off him. So that's no problem for that, which is great. So anyway, and I don't have to go to second hand markets because if I did, I'd probably be paying a lot of money for that slip cover when I can get the other slip cover for a reasonable price. So if you haven't seen this one, it's one of those movies you may think it's not my cup of tea, but go with it. There's a lot more to this movie than meets the eye. And the acting from Kirk Douglas is second to none. So at number seven, that's Paths of Glory. At number six is 1964's Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Now this, this is another movie that I did try a few times when I was younger and I didn't get it at all. It's black and white and I thought, yeah, I, don't, I just don't know if this is going to be my cup of tea. And it took, it took us a long time to pick this up on, on Blu-ray. And it's one, when I was watching these ones, it's one of the last ones I watched. And I was so wrong about this movie. This movie is a, is hilarious. It is the ultimate um, sort of take on how stupid war is. It's got like the, the main scene is in the war room. And it's got these people who do this. They talk about the war. And they show actually how futile and stupid war is. Peter Sellers plays a few different parts in this as well. And he's, he's brilliant. I think Peter Sellers is quite underrated. It's one of those actors who was like huge and everyone loved him back in the day. And he doesn't really get talked about so much. I would love a big Peter Sellers box set to come out. That would be amazing. But this this is one of those movies that there's a few in, the, in Stanley Kubrick's movies that you look at them and you think, that's not for me. And when you watch them, you think, wow, well, how did I not get this movie? Or maybe you need to be of a certain age to watch it, to appreciate it fully. Because I know that some of these movies I, I wouldn't wouldn't have touched with a barge pole back in the day when I was younger. Or I tried and I thought, what, what's this? I just don't get it. This one is released by Warner Brothers on 4K and it has got five stars. I forgot to say that Passive Glory has got 4.5 stars. So the main thing about all of these Stanley Kubrick movies when they get released in 4K, somebody thankfully has went to them and said, right, we have got to do this movie proud because of the, the whole... It's Stanley Kubrick, and we can't mess about with these transfers. So that's another great thing about the Stanley Kubrick things. Movies on 4K, you know you're going to get a really good 4K or the best that you can get of it. But another movie that it struck me as something that I just wasn't really into, but know that this movie is a lot funnier than you would normally think, and it just shows off how stupid and pathetic the whole war thing is. So at number six, that's Dr. Strangelove. So at number five is what I think is Stanley Kubrick's most controversial film that he's ever filmed. It is 1963's Lolita. Now, you might think there's plenty more ones that have got more notoriety, and you'd be right. So this movie has got its 60th anniversary this year, and you would imagine it would be getting a really, really amazing special edition. There's been no talk of it. And also, it has been receiving some 4K like screenings at cinemas, sort of, you know, here and there, not that much. And I think what the, the problem with this movie is because of the subject matter. Now, I didn't want to see this movie for a long time. I was really sort of uncomfortable with it. This is an Italian release. So because I wanted to collect them all, I knew I had to get one. And at the moment, this is the best release of this movie. So I went into its black and white. And I thought, well, I'll see how it is. And uh, I was amazed by this movie. It is so good. Now, it's it's a comedy. Let's just say that... And you're thinking that that goes in a certain direction. Yes, there is elements of that, but it's far removed from that. Humbert Humbert, who is James Mason, and actually Peter Sellers is in here, and it's not a spoiler alert because Peter Sellers gets killed right at the start of the movie, and then it goes right back to the start to see what's happening. And James Mason does kill him, or does he? And you, the movie, you think, hang on a minute, this is, you know, this is a huge spoiler at the end of the movie, but there's a reason behind that. And the, the best thing about this movie is that James Mason's portrayal of Humbert Humbert is so good. He plays a teacher and he gets, he's a despicable human being. And he gets to know that this, he's, he's after this woman who has got this property and he wants to get involved with her so he can sort of basically take all the money and do off with it. But in the meantime, when he goes to stay at the house, he realizes she's got a young daughter. So he thinks, as well, he can, in his own mind, he get rid of the woman and he'd have the young daughter. Well, 
that's that's the kind of story of that one but there's a lot more twists and turns to that and the, the performances by the girl who plays Lolita is unbelievable who sadly passed away very recently and Shelley Winters as well she's brilliant in fact everyone's brilliant in this movie it's stunning in, in uh, black and white here and also it's a long film but doesn't feel long it's got so many twists and turns and goes through the whole relationship of this movie but it does, it's not explicit, but what it does it does show of how just twisted this James Mason character is, but in a humorous way. But this this movie, not anybody doesn't talk about this, probably because of what they think it's about. And it has got the, the flavour of that, but it's nothing more than that, because that's 1963. This movie deserves a lot more um, collations, but the, the problem is because of, this it's just gonna when I was searching for this movie, you've got to be dead careful. It's just a, a problematic area. But anyway, if you can go past that and you and you on the fence like I was and think I'm not gonna touch this with a barge pole, do know that you're missing that one of the best films I've ever seen. So at number five, that's Lolita. At number four is 1968's 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is one of the first ever 4Ks that I bought. It's in this lovely set, lovely edition there. This movie looks incredible on 4K. And to be honest, this is one of the ones that I struggled with and what I had it on DVD, had it on Blu-ray, and I just could not get into this movie. So on this one, when I got the 4K, I thought, right, this is the last time I'm going to watch this movie. Is it going to excite me? Because I heard great things about the transfer and I wanted to get into the whole how good a 4K can look. And the movie clicked with me. Yes, I didn't fully understand it. There is a lot of this movie that you think, what on earth is going on here? I'm not too bothered about that. Maybe I was back in the day and I didn't want to, although I'm a big fan of David Lynch, so how does that work out? But this is a spectacular viewing experience. The special effects in here for 1968 are groundbreaking. Some of them, you just look at them and you think, how on earth did they do that? And when you find out how they did it, you think, wow. And they had to build huge stages so they can run around this sort of sphere. It's crazy that they actually did that, but... I think it was a bit of a flop because people were thinking, what on earth have I just watched? And I think a lot of people do get that from this movie, but it looks sensational. And yes, I do nearly get it, but I don't quite get it. But I don't mind that because this movie is just a, it's a visual masterpiece, if I'm honest. And sometimes when you do put a lot, a lot of people all say on you know videos when you see, oh, I've got 2001, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, I bought this, but I, I don't really know if I'm going to get around to it. Just dig it out. Yes, it's a bit long. Stick it on. Turn the lights off and just go with it like I did. And you might be in for a, a treat. And I know I, I had a, such a blast with this movie. So at number four, that's 2001, A Space Odyssey. At number three is 1980s, The Shining. Now, when I was talking about Stanley Kubrickisms, this movie is the one that has got them all in. It's got this whole symmetry thing when you're in the, the hotel. This movie has got so much going for it. It was Stanley Kubrick's only horror film, or she made more. Although he doesn't make too many films in the same genre. He's got like a, a sci-fi one. He's got um, you know other ones, and they just seem to be like one-offs, which I really appreciate, actually. It doesn't seem to be like who did war films all the time. But this this looks... I can't wait to see this on the OLED, like watch it fully. Because I remember watching it on my other TV and loving it. And I think this these ones are the ones that are going to really stand out for me. And I want to uh, revisit all these ones. And who knows, this one might go up a little bit or down a bit. I can't imagine it going down a bit because it's just one of my favourite movies of all time. And this there's loads of videos out there. If you search them, they go into sort of descriptions about what he sort of had subtext in this movie. Why he was shooting bits like this. Why he had people running around and caught. Talks about the carpet all the time. Talks about the, the room 237. It's it's great and uh, it's it. I love this the whole thing about this movie. It's it's got so much more to it than just a horror film, but it's such a good looking movie as well. And the four K on here is stunning. So number three, that's The Shining, and at number two is 1975's Barry Lyndon. Now, when I was going and buying all of these movies and I had them all on a shelf so I could take me pick and what I wanted to see, this one was one that I just didn't want to watch. It's a three hour long costume drama and I thought I have got no inclination to watch this at all I put it off that long and I thought and some people do say oh Barry Lynn is my favourite film I thought how 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 can it be because you've got things like The Shining going from 2001 how can this be 
a good movie. But when I put it on, I thought, right, I'll give it a go. And I really was thinking I can't be bothered with it at all. And this is just such an amazing movie. So this is coming up to a 50th anniversary in 2025. And they are working on a 4K scan of this. I know that Criterion did a 4K scan for the Blu-ray, which is meant to look sensational. So there is a, there is a 4K out there. And this, this well, like I say, with the, these ones here, even though I haven't got them all on 4K, the one that's the one that's a bit rocky is Lolita, but with them having shown 4K screenings this year, there's nothing better that'll come out. Probably not in the, in the way I would want it to come out. It might be a bit low key, but unfortunately, but as long as it came out on 4K, because it looks good on Blu-ray, so it will look good and uh, great on 4K. Now this one here is filmed really strangely. It's filmed with natural light. There's no uh, like lighting available. It's all done by candlelight. You know, it's done with natural light outside. And you may think, well, that looks, that must look horrendous. Far from it. And a lot of the things he's, uh, he's set up on here is like a, a painting. If you look at like an old painting of, you know, people sort of gathered around, the frames are all shot like that. And every, you could take a frame out of this movie and you could actually frame it and make a painting out of it. He's got such an eye for detail. And it follows this, um, this sort of, a journey of this young fella called Barry Lyndon. And he is sort of by luck and misfortune gets into certain scrapes and certain places and becomes, you know, quite high up and he's a bit of a rascal and a ragabond. Ragabond? Vagabond. Yes, you may think, well, is that it? It's just a costume drama, you know, set in whatever year it is. But this has got so much going for it. It is literally a masterpiece which isn't talked about half as much as it should do. So number two, that's Barry Lyndon. Well, I wonder what number one is. Number one is 1971's A Clockwork Orange. This is by far my favourite film of Stanley Kubrick. I just think this is another masterpiece. This movie, I do think it looks sensational in 4K. Yes, it's a bit muted, but I think it was meant to be like that way. That way. So as you know, I own 13 editions of A Clockwork Orange which there's it's funny because there's no difference in them they're all the same movie but i've got a lot of history with them in vhs dvd uh, blu-ray and 4k i just for some reason i don't know why it is but this movie is a movie that I just love collecting but this movie has got everything going for it it's got a spectacular story the book is my favorite book of all time which is written in nadsat the teenage slang of the future so 1971 to 2021 was its 50th anniversary and I can't see this movie ever coming out again. Probably in some shape or form or some other packaging, which, yeah, will I get it? Yes, I will. So I mean, last watch when I watched it, it came over more comedic than I remember from the first time. It's strange to say this is like comedy. It's got a lot of comedy in it, but it's a great movie. It's just a stylistic movie that probably doesn't look like any other movie going. So I really enjoyed digging into these 13 films of Stanley Kubrick. So what I'll be doing now is I'll probably be going and finding a few more 4Ks of these movies. And then I'll be re-watching these movies. Probably, I'll probably watch them in chronological order, I think, this time. Maybe. And then what I will do, I will come back in a few months' time, hopefully. And I will do a re-ranking of them, hopefully, after getting a few 4Ks and you know talk a bit more about the quality of them. Because the ones I'm seeing, that the review for them, have all got stunning transfers. So thanks for watching. You take care. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.